Ebsley Development Corporation Planning Committee. Uh, my name is Neil Cameron and I chair this committee. Just to let everybody know, the meeting will be recorded and recording has started. I'm going to invite uh, committee members to introduce themselves uh, and then uh, Mark Pullin, the Chief Planning Officer, to introduce himself and his team. So I'll turn to my left to Valerie. Hello, good evening. I'm Valerie Owen. I'm Vice Chair of the Planning Committee and the Manager of the Sleep EDC. Good evening. I'm Penny Marsh, an independent member of the Planning Committee. Good evening. I'm Chris Hall, independent member of the Planning Committee too. Red Maroudas, EDC board member. Then on the screen. Uh, Hi, I'm Councillor Lauren Sullivan and I'm the Grosham representative, but here as a substitute until uh, Lee Froxton can be appointed by the, those methods. Thank you. Okay. Mark, uh, thank you. Yes, yeah, so I'm Mark Pullen, I'm Director of Planning and Place at the EDC. Um, key other people from the EDC today, um, Karen Cronin, um, Senior Planning Manager, Shaid, um, Senior Planning Officer, Michael Jessup, Head of Development Management, and uh, Tim Sharps here, who is the uh, leader of the group. All right, so we'll move to the agenda. Um, apologies for absence. I've received apologies from Councillor Jordan Mead, who's the Kent County Council representative. Do we have any other apologies? Uh, no. Thank you, Chair. Chris, everybody else is there? Yes, yes, that's right. Um, declarations of interest, and these are declarations other than any standing declarations which are recorded on the EDC website. Um, so I note on my own part that in my practice as a barrister, I am time to time instructed by Sapples, who I think are here as an agent. I don't know who the other agent are, but that is on my standing declaration. Um, anybody else wish to make any declarations? Lauren, Councillor Sapples. Thank you. This is a non pecuniary um, interest, uh, but in the document uh, that has been shared around, um, my husband, um, Shane Mockwee Cox, is the cabinet member for planning and has henceforth um, put a representation into, into the, the, the system. So, just so uh, I declare that I am related in that way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, urgent items. Any urgent items? Uh, no, Chair. Uh, record of the meeting. We are to approve, if we if so agree, uh, the record of the meeting held on the 8th of March 2023. Uh, anybody got any points on the minutes? No? No. So, do we approve the minutes? Yep, approves. Thank you. So we then go on to item five, and this is uh, Land East of College Road, North Fleet Embankment West, the floor North Fleet Graves End. And it's a reserved patters application uh, comprising the erection of 130 dwellings with associated infrastructure. I won't read out the whole description because we've all got it. Now, on this, but we're going to follow our normal procedure. So, uh, and that is set out in our terms of reference, paragraph 510. We'll have an officer presentation, shall we, 10 minutes? And we'll then have a chance for those registered to speak. I don't think we've got any, have we got any objectors registered to speak? I know. Um, so we'll then go to supporters, and that's five minutes in total. So if there's more than one of you speaking, still five minutes in total. And then we'll have committee questions to the supporters and the purpose of those questions will be to seek clarification. There will then be uh, committee 
debate and, and if we need further assistance from officers, we'll seek it. And when we've had the debate, we'll vote on item five. When we've done that, we'll go on to item six. So I'm going to hand over to you, Karen, uh, for the officer presentation. Thank you, Chair. Right, this application seeks approval of reserve matters, including details of access, layout, scale, appearance and landscaping for 130 dwellings in the second major residential phase of the North Fleet Embankment West mixed use development. The residential land is being marketed by Bellway Homes as Harbour Village. The scheme will provide a mix of two, three and four bedroom dwellings. 40 um, will be delivered as affordable housing. 83 will be M42 compliant and the, the proposals also include delivery of uh, a formal open space, uh, the Kiln Pocket Park. Just to give a little bit of the background to this, um, Outline Planning Commission was granted for um, the wider strategic North Fleet Embankment West site in 2018 for a mixed use development for up to 532 dwellings that was later increased to 567. Uh, 46,000 square metres of employment floor space, public open space, including a public car playing field and riverside promenade, community use, public rights of way improvement, um, highways improvement, a fast and a fast track link through the site, as well as a bridge um, linking Hyde Lane and Factory Road, linking at Phase 1B and uh, Bevan's Park. The structure of the outline permission meant that certain documents needed to be submitted prior to reserve matters um, approval. They included the site-wide heritage management plan, um, ecological mitigation and enhancement strategy, the phasing and implementation plan and uh, a master plan. They set out the framework that all resident... Oh, sorry, my screen's just gone blank. Sorry. Don't worry, you could have the time to. Technology is really helpful when it works, and when it doesn't, it. Uh, Let me just good. see if it's still going to work. No, it's still not. I'll stop sharing. Try. Sorry. Um, give you some injury time. <laughs> Um, sorry, so um, yeah, these documents set out the framework that all reserve matters applications should adhere to um, and the details um, within the reserve matters applications need to broadly comply with those documents. The residential master plan sets out the broad principles of the form structure and establishes the design vision and the character areas of the residential land. And the phasing and implementation plan sets out the triggers for delivery of key infrastructure. Uh, and some of those triggers are linked to the delivery of phase two, including delivery of Bevans Park and Bevans Park Bridge. Um, that are prior to the first occupation of the 150th residential unit that would be within phase two. As you can see, phase two is located at the centre of the Harbour Village development and forms a continuation of the approved residential phase 1B to the south. Um, that, that reserve matters application was approved in 2021 for 121 dwellings and open space um, that is Chimney View Park. The access site layout and street typologies are in accordance with the master plan with a simple gridded street network. And primary access to the site is from Hyde Lane, and this will be an extension of the access allowed as part of phase 1B and will include a dedicated cycle path. There are two secondary access points to rear parking courts from College Road. 
Um, the, the roads within the scheme are not proposed to be adopted, so they will remain in private ownership that will be to adoptable standards. There is a public right of way footpath NU3 along the eastern boundary of the site. There are two pedestrianised areas of public realm blocking vehicular, further vehicular access from College Road. And these will incorporate informal play features. The layout has changed during the application process due to the discovery of archaeological remains on the site. And this has led to three dwellings being removed from the scheme and a pocket park being provided. A full reconsultation has taken place following submission of amended plans. The street hierarchies follow the guidance in the Ebsplit Public Realm Strategy and the Master Plan, with Hive Lane as a wider formal primary street with footways and street trees on both sides. Secondary residential streets are narrower with alternating planted margins, and the Mew streets are, um, are narrower with um, a more informal. College Road is an existing street where a new footway will be provided. The variation in the streets picked up in the design of the buildings, the materials palette and the hard and soft landscaping. There are 186 parking spaces provided for 130 homes. Seven visitor spaces have been provided. This is slightly below the level required in the EBSLEET residential parking standards. It requires 20% of parking within the public realm to be unallocated to provide visitor parking. Um, but only only ever so slightly. Um, the uh, the parking will be managed by a private management company, and a condition has been suggested to secure this. The residential master plan sets out seven character areas, four of which are in phase two: Hive Lane, Bevan's Park Edge, residential streets, and College Road. So the proposed um, scale massing and urban grain respond to the context of neighbouring buildings um, and the site level changes and the street layer offers views of the river throughout the site. Um, Hive Lane is the main pedestrian and vehicular connection through the residential area, um, but phase two is primarily an extension of the approved phase 1B in terms of design to create a consistent street scene. The housing is predominantly three storey terraced housing with an industrial uh, with industrial and nautical references and a riverside warehouse design. Um, the houses are in pairs with black weatherboarding and a grey plinth similar to the Preston image shown. And just for your reference, there's the, um, an example of the elevations and the floor plan um, and the street scene down High Plain. Uh, Bevans Park Edge is located close to the cliff edge facing towards Bevans Park and has a softer form and materiality to reflect the more naturalised settings of the local Kent vernacular. Um, there's a mix of built forms within this uh, character area, including corner dwellings and paired gable fronts. Again, there's um, some of the elevations and floor plans. The residential streets are characterised by two storey terraces of two or four houses with material and roof lines alternating along the street to create variation and interest. Uh, the design was updated during the course of the application to, um, to add um, additional um, architectural features. Uh, um, to add um, alternate gablet features, brick banding, stone sills and headers, um, and amended window proportions and porch entrances to reflect um, the, uh, the Huggins College uh, architectural vernacular. College Road is a new um, is a new character area being introduced within this phase um, and. Throughout the course of the application, changes have been made to, um, to this part of the site as well um, to add additional um, design details to reflect the local vernacular 
um, as shown in the precedent images. And the use of flint has um, has come through in the materials um, to reflect the flint wall um, along College Road. Um, and those details will also be um, added within the uh, hard landscaping along there. Um, Uh, the uh, the soft landscaping and the hard landscaping are also um, different in each of the character areas. Um, the images show that the landscaping changes through the different character areas with more formal planting and street trees within either lane. And more informal um, soft landscaping within the residential streets and College Road. Um, because of the design of College Road and uh, the fact that it's an existing narrow street, there won't be any street trees along this road um, because it, it would interfere with the, the design to create a sense of enclosure um, with the houses going straight onto the street here. The Mew Streets and the Cliff Edge, again, have, have a much more informal um, soft landscaping palette. Um, the cliff edge again will not have any trees um, to reflect um, that the more naturalised edge there. This slide's just to show some of the hard landscaping palette of materials. Um, again, the same with, with the design and with soft landscaping. Um, you've got the more formal edge along High Lane, um, and then the more and then the semi-formal residential streets with the informal edges along Bevan's Park Edge. That also shows um, some of the proposed potential um, play on the way features in some of the public realm. As I addressed earlier, um, during um, during works on the site, uh, Southern Kiln Range was uh, exposed. Um, that has created changes to the layout. Um, this has um, this has been the main um, source of objection against the application. Um, the Heritage Management Plan does set out the framework um, for the commitment to long term management of archaeology and heritage assets. So all reserve matters have to be in accordance with that. Um, the applica applicant has been working with KCC Archaeology um, to come up with a solution to. Uh, to try and. Retain the heritage assets as best as possible. Um, it was decided with uh, KCC Archaeology, who have agreed that the um, that the kiln will be preserved in situ, and the proposal is to fill the void with foamed concrete. Um, but that has resulted in um, the addition of a pocket park above. The landscape design for the pocket park uh, depicts the outline of the kiln <coughs> in landscaping using brick of the same diameter as the below ground retained kiln and tunnel. This area will include formal seating trees, hedges and planting to create formal edges of space and interpretation boards um, to provide information on the below ground kiln range with above ground references. There's further in heritage interpretation um, suggested throughout the site, um, and this would be secured by condition that includes brick walls to reference the kilns and flint inlaid in the boundary walls along College Road. These are all important issues and I don't want to speed you up, Sorry. but we are I, uh, yeah, way yeah. over the. Sorry, um, but it's important that we're informed. Yeah. So. Um, we did receive a late rep uh, today from First Plan on behalf of Aggregate Industries and Brett and Sons relating to noise um, that has been circulated to the committee on the supplementary agenda. Um, 
the main um, the main issue was relating to um, to exactly which which um, dwellings would require mechanical ventilation and which would just require specialist glazing. These plans show um, with the yellow dots the ones that would get mechanical ventilation in the acoustic assessment. These ones were assessed as having um, a potentially unacceptable noise levels internally um, along all elevations, um, whereas the ones whereas others shown in in green potentially um, have less have one elevation where noise would not be unacceptable. Uh, but that is that's the gist of their um, their objection. Because they don't want the um, noise nuisance to impact on their operations. Um, I probably don't need to really go through these ecological enhancements, but they are, they're proposing bird bricks and bat tubes within the site. Um, and the sustain sustainability um, will provide a 4% increase over and above building works part L. Thank you very much indeed. Was there another um, email from Councillor Oh yes, sorry. Um, yes, there was another email from Councillor Mockley Cox today, um, just emailing, reiterating his comments. Um, and his his comments were included um, in, um, within the within the reports. Thank you very much indeed. Right, well, let's turn to supporters. Um, five minutes. Thank you. Good evening. I am Gregory Evans from Savills. I'm Bellway's planning agent. I'm joined by Harrison Thomas and Jamie MacArthur from Bellway, as well as Bellway's team who have helped prepare this planning application. We're here to answer any questions you may have. We really welcome the recommendation that this application should be approved. The committee may be aware that for almost 20 years, this site has been earmarked for regeneration to create a thriving community with new homes and modern commercial uses. Since granting outline permission in 2018, Bellway has worked hard to deliver the site from concept to reality. This committee approved reserve matters for the first residential phase, phase 1B, in November 21. This is currently under construction and new residents have moved in. The first communal open space will soon be opened for existing and new residents to use. This phase two accords with the outline planning permission, the approved detailed master plan and follows the design character and layout principles previously established. This phase will continue to deliver a landscape led new sustainable neighbourhood. It has 130 new homes, 40 of which are affordable, a new heritage pocket park, and the provision of green and open spaces, including 102 new trees. Amendments have been made to positively respond to the site's heritage. The site has planning permission to create a development platform. This comprises re-leveling and remediating land ready for development. As part of these approved development platform works, unexpected and additional tunnels and kilns used in the production of cement were found. Bellway's archaeologist, in constant contact with KCC archaeology, agreed an updated methodology for uncovering and recording of the cement industry remains. An appropriate mitigation strategy was agreed between Bellway, KCC archaeology and EDC and the site-wide package of heritage benefits and mitigation compromise comprises the retaining the best preserved kiln in situ at the site, the delivery of a further pocket park around the retained kiln, resulting in the removal of three houses from the previous proposal, an enhanced heritage park within Bevan's Park, and the retention of three tunnels, amongst other things. This demonstrates Bellway's commitment to celebrating the site's rich industrial heritage. This phase will secure the following. 130 two, three and four bedroom houses 
of which 31% will be affordable. 44% of the dwellings meet M42 building regulation standards, exceeding the Section 106 requirement. The new heritage pocket park will be for all the community to enjoy. 102 new trees to create landscaped and tree-lined streets reflecting the garden city narrative. Electric vehicle charging points for every house. Parking typologies that create strong streetscapes and conceal the car. And a 31% reduction in CO2 above 2013 building reg requirements solar PV panels and energy efficient homes. We respectfully request that the committee approves this application in accordance with the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, turn to committee members to see whether you've got any questions in uh, clarification of what we've just heard um, before we turn to a general debate. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's one, so. oh, yeah. Is it okay. that we that we haven't talked about much thus far, which is around um, the proposal for the roads not to be adopted? Now, I, I understand when you've just finished uh, your presentation there around sustainability and you know, zero carbon and all the rest of it, electrical charging points, but actually it's usually quite a challenge, isn't it, for residents to maintain roads and KCC seems very keen for them to be adopted. I just can't get my head around why they're so keen for them not to be adopted. Would that be talking to Harrison? No, I, I will. Um, there was a decision we, we actively took. So um, there are three main reasons for that. It's EV charging to all homes, which is I think I think is important. Um, it also enables us to better allocate and control the parking across the site. Um, otherwise, that would be through um, Gravesham Council responsibility. Um, and their permitting system, um, I think, caused issues with the number of overall parking spaces available on the site. Um, and then the third point is the um, KCC's adoption team don't like the amount of landscaping that's in the proposals um, and weren't willing to adopt the landscaping scheme that we put forward. So those are the three main reasons for doing so. So the latter point infers that it's substandard somehow. And also I don't understand <coughs> how, how enforcement would be maintained because, you, you know, as a private developer, you wouldn't have enforcement problems, would you? So the in terms of inappropriate it's, a, it's an approach we've taken elsewhere. Um, the, the management company employ um, a parking enforcement company across the site, which actually work, works out better um, for residents. So uh, if the roads were adopted, the parking in carriageway um, couldn't be allocated to, to homes. It would be communal and therefore the responsibility of, of Gravesham to manage that parking with their permitting system, which allows I think multiple um, permits per household, regardless of whether they have on plot parking. So there's not enough car, car parking across the site to allow, for example, every resident with a new home to have three permit spaces. That, that wouldn't work. Um, and we'd have customer and resident issues that would come back to us. So that was quite, quite important. I didn't understand your comment on the, the third point being substandard. Because the, you, you, the third point you raised was that it, the landscaping wasn't acceptable to KCC. Because they don't like to manage additional landscaping. They're only managing and maintaining well, less oh, than it's it's the, it's the it's point. There's more rather than one. There's too much for them to take yeah, on. Yeah, no, yeah, so I misunderstood the other way. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you very much. The first point, just to add to that, was the electric charging points wouldn't be adopted as well. So we'd better have the benefits of having all those bases have access to charging. Any yeah, other question? Wondering. The uh, the residents who would have their parking allocated parking on the roads, it says by permit. Would they have to purchase permits? No, that's, for those? no, that no that's, the... that's part of what, what you get when you purchase the house. So no, there's no additional controls the cost. Then again, the benefits the residents is they don't have then the council could obviously charge what they would like. So this is benefits the management company, the residents overall a lot of time. Um, Lauren. You have a question. 
Uh, thank you, Neil. Um, just uh, building on some of those questions and a couple more of, of my own. Is it the anticipation that Ebsfleet Garden City, which is based in Norfleet for this point, is about combining communities or separating communities? Um, one question on the point about paying tributes to Norfleet's heritage, um, which is being buried again and destroyed in some parts. Was there more that could have been done? And the last point I have is about the evidence that the parking management system is better than the alternative. I have very big reservations about the adoption and actually KCC should be adopting roads, but that's about negotiating with yourselves to ensure that they are, can afford to do so. Um, because certainly with, with my uh, experience with representing Cable Wharf residents as well as Springhead um, new Epsweet Garden City residents, the parking is an issue. Um, and so what evidence do you have that the parking management system is a better way of dealing with this? And do you think that this leads to segregated communities or combined communities? Thank you. I could pick up Lauren's first question about combining communities. Bellway has been working with the local community through its consultation with them over a period of years now and um, to really to combine the, the communities together, Lauren. This proposal has community facilities such as open space, the Heritage Park, Chimney View Park, which are for use by existing residents as well as new residents. There will be a community facility located in the next stage of the development, which is phase three, close to the riverfront. And that will be a community centre for all the existing community to use. So we do see this as a proposal which actually can combine communities. And Bellway has appointed Terapy and a specialist local community engagement company to undertake a community engagement with local people. And I, I just add to that, on, on the specific point of parking. Parking. Think, yeah, mm. new residents wouldn't be eligible for parking permits within the surrounding community. So that I think you're actually avoiding uh, issues of of kind of overspill of parking into surrounding streets so they, they wouldn't be so current residents that live there at the moment don't have a parking permit scheme so they will have to buy a parking permit scheme to prevent people of new people coming in parking on their streets and and likewise is that is that what the solution is no we've got um jason lewis who's Bellway's transport consultant who might be able to answer the question better. Hello, yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, the local area is subject to uh, a parking permit area. Um, so in our discussions with uh, Nicholas May at Graveson Borough Council, um, mm -hmm. it's clear that the current area all around uh, the, the high street around this part of uh, North Fleet is subject to a PPA. Um, and in original discussions, we spoke to him about extending that PPA into the site, but with the uh, adoption issues that have been outlined quite clearly by colleagues um, just now, uh, that clearly can't happen. Um, so um, I'd like to go on to a point as well that this area is designated as highly accessible within the Ebbs Fleet uh, parking standards. However, the amount of parking that Bellway is proposing is above that um, highly accessible maximum. And it's more towards the Kent County Council and Grosham Borough Council standards. It's, it's probably just a little higher than midway in between in recognition uh, um, of some of the points you've raised about some of the local residents having um, uh, limited parking capacities. So Bellway <coughs> has worked quite carefully to balance off the existing issues that local um, existing homeowners might um, uh, confront and also providing an efficient and well-managed approach to parking for their residents that won't result in an overspill elsewhere. OK, is that a guarantee that it won't overspill um, parking and who who is a kind of accountable for that for if there is overspill? Where do I send the complaints to? Because I know they'll come to me. Um, Gravesham Borough Council will look after the PPA area to the south of the uh, Northfleet Harbour Village site. 
So I suspect they will be the first point of contact if there is um, overspill into PPA areas um, at any point. Thank you. Right, any other questions before we have a debate about it? Um, right. I like much the design, I like the response to the flint brick, um, the uh, um, lack of homogeneity in the design, the detailing, all of that is good. I like the, the, the landscaping. Um, what, what sort of commitment is there to make sure that that survives um, value engineering, if you like, through the final design process? Is this what I'm going to get? And is this what, what we're going to end up with? We're going to end up with something that looks less attractive. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's in our interest to make sure the, these schemes are built as, as designed and, and through that process. Um, not only at this stage, but there will be detailed conditions on landscaping which have to submit approval. Um, and then also at the end of the project, when these, these schemes have been implemented, um, you know, we, we also have a process to go through as part of our new homes quality board to ensure these, these schemes are built properly and to what was promised to not only customers, but yourselves at EDC. Um, and you, at EDC, there's also a very good compliance team to check all this as well. So we're working through a number of other schemes to make sure you know, what was designed and committed to did, does get delivered. I've got so your commitment that that's the there, approach. There's, you're going a, to there's take. a number of there's, there's a number of people and organisations we we have to show that commitment to and, and show it physically on site as a as a delivery. That I understand, but your commitment is there. So it, you know, unless you change it, stages, <laughs> absolutely, that's yeah. not going to be and, an issue. For and us. if we change it, it has to it has to come through and as anyway. But you're not going to change it. That's what I want to hear. No, no, no. There's no, there's no, 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 no. You want to Yeah, on. that's the scheme we want to build. Thank you. Uh, and there is a condition requiring submission of further details. Approval. Yes. Um, can you just come back to Councillor Sullivan asked a question about heritage as well. Um, yes, that was it. Richard Eager, who is Belway's archaeologist, has been working closely with the heritage. If you don't mind him answering your question. I'll, I'll kick off and then Richard can provide, I think, some, some more technical um, well, additions. When, when you do, can I just add a question? I'd like to know precisely what is still on the site and therefore what and what will be preserved in situ and how it will be preserved. I'll let Richard answer that point, I think, specifically. But, but generally on what was explored and, and how we got to the solution, we explored everything from retaining all, all six of the partially in, intact kilns um, on site in situ. Um, that was, I guess, one, one end of the spectrum. Um, the reasons for ruling that out, the consented development platform levels would have meant that all bar the one that we're proposing to retain this issue would have basically been cut in half um, and, and structurally not sound, so not suitable to then build the development platform for development. So the only option there was to knock out the, the 20 houses in the middle and you basically have a kind of fenced off grass mound which retained them in, in situ in the middle of the development that um, for design reasons and and other reasons was considered not sensible. Um, I think the, the solution we've got, we, we work with, with KCC Archaeology, um, it's worth noting that Historic England had no objection to our end solution um, and decided that what was found wasn't worthy or hasn't been listed so far. Um, so the, the solution we've got to, I think, is a very sensible, suitable compromise, balancing what's been found, the existing planning context, um, and, and the need for new homes on, on the allocated site. So I think a combination of all of those, those things is how we ended up working very closely with KCC. Uh, hi, my, my name's Richard Meager. I work for RPS. I'm appointed by Sandals to deal with archaeology on this site. Um, I think it's important to point out that um, we have worked throughout this process with KCC Archaeology to agree all of the strategies that we've implemented. What we are, what we have preserved on the site is the best preserved kiln from the range that we're calling the Southern Kiln Range. Um, that is, it's not visible uh, at present. It was never designed to be visible uh, as an above ground structure. Um, if we're looking at the context of the scheduled Aspins kiln to the west of where we are, 
that was always an above ground structure. What, we're, what we have here is a buried structure and we are proposing to keep it buried because that is by far, or certainly through current understanding, the best way of keeping it preserved. Um, and the way to celebrate it will be through the pocket park and through interpretive material that will explain how it functioned, uh, what it was, how big it is, and all of those issues that will be very easily explained on a notice board rather than and they don't need to be um, a visible representation of the actual kiln. We're dealing with something that's about 10 metres in height. Um, and so, and, and it's not likely to be in particularly great condition. And so for those, for those combinations of reasons, we're proposing to keep it buried uh, and to, as I say, uh, have the pocket park and the explanatory material. It does seem to be at present um, a preferred methodology for preserving remains in situ, not to have them visible. Um, I've dealt with other, um, other situations where, um, yes, we've, we've instead of exposing them to the elements, we've, we've kept them buried. And the answer to my question about how many are still there, so there were six, so you're going to preserve one, how yes. many are the yes. other five still there at the moment? No, no. no. What, one is still there, the only one proposed to be retained is, is still there. I mean, I, I think we, we took advice and under the consented development platform work, some, and in conjunction with an agreement from KCC, the remaining others, which were partially demolished anyway, partially removed have been entirely recorded and removed. So there's one left. There's one left and that's the one we're proposing. So and yeah. then there's the question on what, what has been found and items to be released. Yes. So so I think it's worth pointing out that all of all of the arc all of the removal of the fabric has been fully recorded by an archaeological field contracting unit. Um, we've used a variety of methodologies for, for recording that those remains, including standard archaeological fieldwork methodologies and more um, IT savvy um, methods such as photogrammetry and 3D laser scanning and, and drone surveys so that we have a very accurate record of what we of what was on the site. And in the recording of the dismantling of these um, industrial remains, we're able to understand a lot more about how they function. I'm going to go to Lauren and then after that, um, unless anybody has an absolute burning question, I'd like to move to general debate. Lauren. Lovely, thank you, Neil. Just to follow up on the on the point there. So these other kilns that were mentioned are Schedule 1 monuments and have a huge significance um, to that area. These haven't had the time in order to potentially become listed or scheduled, uh, if that's the, the appropriate verb. Um, is in the report, uh, there seems to be an, 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 a consensus that all the authorities are in agreement with this. Can I just confirm that what Gresham Borough Council said in this uh, remit, as they also have heritage um, input and powers? So can I just, just confirm on the consensus, please? I think that's probably proper yeah. if you can for the officer to answer, um, unless you can give a quick answer to that. My, my I under, as I understand that case, Kent County Council Archaeology were advise EDC on archaeology on below ground archaeological matters. This the the exercise was deemed an, arch, an archaeological fieldwork exercise, and we dealt almost solely with 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 the officers at KCC Archaeology. Yeah, I, I don't believe that I. I got comments on the, the heritage from GBC. I believe you would have done. Well, perhaps you can just check that. They're not recorded yeah. in the report. They're certainly not recorded in the report. No, that's what I've just gone to. I've got planning, housing, highways, parking and environmental protection, but not heritage. Right. Well, if, I will double check that. Well, if that could be checked, and we'll then move on to... Councillor Mockwee-Cox put that in. And Comrade Broadley would have put that in as well. Two councillors on heritage grounds. Yeah. Grace from Council. 
We do have those. Yeah, we do have those. They're, they're recorded separately, um, the councillor representations to um, to the Graves and Borough Council representations. OK, I believe there was a representation sent in from Graves and Borough Council from Planning for Heritage with a comment. I will certainly check through that now. Brilliant, thank you. KCC, I think so. KCC Heritage. So thank you very much for that contribution. I think we're going to move to general debate. So at this stage, we normally invite speakers, if there's enough room for you to sit down, to leave the uh, table. Yeah, then absolutely, yes. Then. Just as long as there's enough room. Don't stand up for the sake of standing up. Thank you very much. Right, well, I'm going to throw it open to the floor, so to speak. Anybody have any uh, contributions they wish to make? Um, just comments then, uh, Chair, if I may. I'm the Chair uh, Fred's views on the uh, design. I found myself very encouraged by a lot of what we saw, particularly the College Road character area, I thought it was very impressive. Um, I think it's perverse that in order to get electric vehicle charge into every unit and additional landscaping, you have to keep it private rather than have it adopted, which seems a bizarre state of affairs, but I know from experience that that's likely to be the case, and having dealt with KCC, I found myself wholly satisfied with the archaeological uh, work and the conclusion. Um, I think at KCC, Archaeology gets far too precious about some of these buried remains. There are lots of them, they've been well recorded, and I think homes are more important than preserving yet more buried structures. So the loss of three units to preserve to create a pocket park, I think, is a win-win. Um, the uh, the pocket park is created. They've only lost three units. I say only. I'm sure that impacted the cash flow, but forecast. But um, I think it's a good solution. I find myself um, encouraged by that. Thank you. Any other comments? No? Oh, oh, yeah, yes. That. yes. That's the case. Can we just, have we been able to check whether there's a hand up? up? Yeah, I think so. so Mike has checked the, checked the files and we can't find any, no, any comments from Gravesham in relation to her, her, Gravesham offices in relation so to So that's her. Gravesham oh. Council formally, but we do note that at least two Gravesham councillors, although I think Mr. Broadley, who you've referred to as a former Gravesham councillor, somebody told me, is that right? He's a county councillor. He's a county councillor. Yeah. Count, Kent county councillor. Um, but no, the, the comments in the report are on behalf of Gravesham Borough Council. Um, we can put in as officer reports or as members, but the, the member responds on behalf of the council responsible for heritage is there. And I note that there isn't a EDC response to that, which is usually you know what the officer comment um what the officer comment is there. So that's just a interesting by the side. Um just to on this, I, I do have concerns about adopted yeah. roads. Um that this will lead to a kind of a segregated area. Uh the parking, while I understand and can have heard that Burway have put in more than what they should or need to I, d I do wonder whether it will be enough certainly when we have the next phase of the development as well um the affordable homes and again i will always raise this affordable for who and i know it is a defined by the government but you know for affordable for who and i think these homes are coming into an area where of of deprivation and people should be able to aspire to have one of these homes. I, I hope that they would be able to afford to, but um, we need to be clear on who, who are they affordable for. So um, 3.8, um, I I had a point on, oh, that's it, that's the point there. That um, the Interesting that of the, the, what it looks like. So we've gone for the, uh, the wood, and I probably this is probably one of the questions I probably should have asked um, Bellway, but the is that 
actual wood and it needs to be painted or is it a composite? I hope one of the officers will be able to answer. Um, it's interesting that they took an image from Gravesend and this is Norfleet. <laughs> um, and that's all I have on that front. So I'm not entirely convinced. I am concerned about the, the parking element and the, the response back was residents will have to pay for a Gravesend Borough Council parking permit for that area, even though it doesn't exist at the moment. There is one for Norfleet Station, but not for this area. Um, so we are asking residents that are existing to pay for one, yet the new residents will not need to pay for one because it's part of the management fee or management structure. So I just I just think that that's not fair, um, and which all comes back down to this adoptive road and have we got enough parking. So those are my kind of flagging concerns um, at the moment, but happy to hear others in the debate. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, thank you. Um, one of, of the key issues, and I absolutely agree with Chris, that the design element is is attractive, and certainly the frontage to College Road is uh, greatly improved with um, you know the overall design of the building. So the, the front wall issues, I guess. Um, personally, I think it is a heck of a shame to lose the heritage, and I do suspect that had there been more time there would have been much more lively debate and probably intervention from statutory authorities around that. And we're left now with a, a single kiln, which is going to be filled with concrete. So it does seem to me to be really important that we try and uh, you know, manage the heritage assets in a different way. And, and there's going to be uh, a, a new site, at, a heritage site at Bevan's Park, which clearly needs careful management. But I would also like to see um, some sort of trigger in relation to the proposed pocket park above the kiln uh, so that we can be absolutely assured that we're going to get that benefit, that wider benefit for the uh, community um, as if you like a sort of an exchange for the loss of some of some of that heritage. Um, but overall, uh, you know, I think it is it is a, a good scheme. Um, anybody else? Yeah, yes. I think I would just end up particularly on the design. I think there's so much to commend. It's mm. it's very good. I do still have concerns about the um, road adoption and just how that the expense that that might incur for residents further down the line in the future and the uh, the management of that. But I I understand what's been said. Um, anything else, or shall we move to a vote on this item? Do you want officer to come back on any of this? Yes, well, is there anything you want to... The pocket park trigger, for yeah, example? Yeah, I was going to say, with, with regards to the trigger, there there are conditions um, required prior to first occupation for um, the full details of the heritage interpretation and also for landscaping. So which condition is that? Uh, the heritage interpretation is condition 13. Um, but that, that's prior to occupation. You have to have the details submitted and approved, and you have to installed prior to the relevant area of open space first being made available. What's the trigger to make sure that you actually do it? To deliver the park, which I think is different. There was a condition. Where is it? <laughs> Which one is it, my person? Not one. Okay, so I think perhaps condition nine. It again, that's works to the kill as opposed to the delivery of the park. Well, we could have a we could have an additional condition which requires delivery of the park prior to occupation of a certain number of dwellings. Yes. 
I think that's what this condition is trying to, was trying to do yes. in terms of what it's showing, but I think it's probably not as clear as it needs to be. It leads it to plots, so there's one, two, three, four plots, and can't occupy those plots until this is done. The intention of that is to preserve, but also to provide the public park. Maybe the body needs to be tightened up a little bit to be clear mm -hmm. on that. So perhaps we could agree to for the chair to agree that precise wording. Um, yeah, if the committee will think of approving. Yes, but the authority is the planning officer to make minor changes. The words that's probably more than a minor. Yeah, so if we agree. Yes, between us, with you, okay. understanding the committee. It will be delegated to you as chief planning officer in consultation with with you. Yes. Right, and, and just in relation, yes. just to, just to the other point, points for completely. So yes, so Lauren, thank you. Um, so after the comments from Conrad, so from Councillor Bortley yeah, and from Councillor uh, Mockery Cox are in the report. Yeah, there isn't an, an EDC officer comment in relation to that. I guess um, I'll probably say that our response is the heritage interpretation element of the report, but I appreciate that there isn't anything specifically there. And um, so the affordable housing and the affordability of homes. So obviously the affordable housing provision within that phase would then be subject to uh, the approval uh, process within the Gradesham um, Council um, sort of nominations process. But I appreciate that's probably slightly, slightly different to your point about the affordability of the market homes, which I know is a point that you um, But um, yeah, I've, I've, I've fully understand the points around um, roads and parking um, for the application in, 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 in front of the committee to, uh, to make a call. Thank you. Well, we have a recommendation um, and I can take a vote on those in favour. So the recommendation, and I'm suggesting we change this, approval subject to the following conditions for delegated authorities, the chief planning officer to make, take out minor changes to the wording in consultation with the chair. Would that satisfy you? Yes, that would be. Tim, okay with that? Absolutely. Um, so those in favour? Five. Those against? Right. So that's carried. Thank you very much for presenting that report. And we'll now go on to the next item on the agenda, which is halted and side phase two. Uh, it's too worried. Oh, okay. So just to get a bit of water. Um, yeah. Sorry, thank okay. you, Chair. Fine. Fine. Yeah, actually. <coughs> yeah. Have we got people registered to speak on this? Yeah, well, developers to speak again. That's only sort of that. Oh, sorry, sorry, Lauren. Can the can that vote be recorded in the minutes, please? Of course. Of course. Thank you. Um, you're appearing on a very large screen, Lauren, so we can see you if we look in the right direction. But the hand oh, function the appears line. in the most tiny bit at the bottom corner. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's much better. Um, okay, item six, Alton and South, and we'll follow. So we got nobody. Yeah, and then it was just going to proceed. There's some people who are joined remotely, um, and the, um, the developers and their agents are, I believe. Right, we better we better wait for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Particularly if they want to come in and haven't been let in. They can get way through. I've been walking around with that parcel day, I know. I mean, Roland and other people were here. Um, so let me just check my emails to see whether they are stuck somewhere. They might be opposite. Yeah. Go. I'll stay here. <laughs> Right. 
here for rather than uh, yeah. If you take a seat and then come to the, the table uh, when you're called, if that's yeah. okay. So, yeah, sit anywhere around me. Go for the table. Thank you. Oh, now we've lost. Fred. Okay. Right. I think we're all ready to go again, so we're going to follow the same procedure. Um, officer presentation, we've got no objectors recorded. Uh, we have a supporter uh, seeking to speak, so it's going to be 10 minutes for the officer presentation, uh, five minutes in total for the supporters, then there will be committee questions, then there will be a debate and any clarification by officers. So over to you, Shay. Thank you, Chair. OK, this is the second set of proposals before you tonight and is made by Redrow Homes and seeks permission for all reserved matters for 91 dwellings, comprising 37 one and two bed apartments and 54 three and four bed dwellings. It's made pursuant to conditions 2, 25 and 28 of the Eastern Quarry Outline Commission and it follows uh, extensive pre-app engagement with the EDC officers and reviews with the, by the Design Review Forum. The application site is located within Whitecliffe, formerly known as Eastern Quarry, uh, which forms a strategic development site uh, within the EDC area comprising three villages, Castle Hill, Alcadon and Ashmere, all separated by areas of open space. The master plan for Whitecliffe embeds principles of sustainability in creating walkable neighbourhoods and a fast track corridor which runs through the centre, providing an efficient public transport connection to Ebsley International Station to the east and Blue Water to the west, as well as the centres of Gravesend and Dartford beyond. The site is located in the south of Alcadon Village within a walkable distance to the Alcadon Market Centre. The phase follows on from Red Rose's first development in Alcadon South, noted as RMA1 on the screen, and forms part of the wider Red Road development area within Alcadon South, which is anticipated to come forward in two further submissions, RMA3 and RMA4, noted on the screen indicatively. The site is adjoined by three significant pieces of green infrastructure, being the Green Zone and Swale to the east, Castle Hill Lake to the south, and what will become the major urban park along its western boundary. The planning framework for Whitecliffe is extensive and complex, whereby the principle of development is drawn down through a suite of parameter plans and the strategy documents, as well as obligations from the Section 106 agreement. These inform the site-wide master plans, area master plan and design code documents, which instruct and guide reserve matters application as demonstrated by the flow chart on screen. And tonight, we are looking at the reserve matters stage as highlighted in red. In terms of access and layout, the proposals comply well with the layout and street typologies identified in the area master plan and design code for Alcadon. The development appropriately fronts the primary street to the north. Continuing the urban design principles established in RM1, with vehicular access provided to the rear via the secondary street. The secondary street provides a spine road for Alcadon South and was approved as part of the RM1 phase. Wide verges incorporate regular tree planting and some parking bays with a wide shared cycle footway providing a cycle friendly street as per the AMP. Running north to south through the southern portion of the site, the view corridor continues the form and function established in RM1, providing a shared surface for vehicles, pedestrians and cycles beside a central landscape spine, which achieves a clear visual link and will promote walking and cycling to and from the market centre. The proposed development identifies two new streets. The southeast new street is accessed from the view corridor. The northeast new street is accessed from the secondary street. And as with RM1, it's tight, intimate streets with tree planting um, and also supports the AMP requirement for rear vehicular access for those properties fronting the primary street. Both the new streets provide a link to the laneways along the eastern boundary, which rely on narrow road widths and shared surfaces as per the area master plan and design code. The proposed development incorporates a limited number of cul-de-sacs and four car parking courts serving apartment blocks. 
These are small in size and have been well designed to discreetly locate open surface parking. Four indicative pedestrian cycle links are shown up to the boundary with the adjoining open space. The precise locations and finish to these connections requires coordination with the adjoining developer and is thus secured by condition. As noted in the report, KCC Highways have reviewed the application and following amendments to the scheme raised no objections in terms of highways, access or car parking. In terms of car parking, the scheme utilises a number of parking typologies to ensure visual impact on the public ground is minimised. Parking for houses is predominantly provided at on plot with a carport garage with a second tandem space available to the rear by a through drive arrangement. Parking courts are kept small and supplemented by understory parking provided to the flat blocks to L and M. Allocated and unallocated parking in the public realm has been kept to a minimum, which aligns with the approved parking management plan for Alperdon. And the overall number of parking spaces for the proposed system has been assessed and is considered to generally accord with the parking management plan and largely comply with the sustainable travel strategy. 74 active electric vehicle charging points are proposed, ensuring all dwellings have the ability to charge an electric car either on plot or from within the car parking courts. And cycle storage is intended to meet the sustainable travel strategy requirements for all dwellings and is again secured by condition. The layout is supported by a well-considered scheme, landscape scheme, which enhances the street hierarchy and sensitively responds to the adjoining open spaces. Within the view corridor, areas of incidental play, street seating, pathways and formal and informal planting follow the precedent set in RM1. In addition to the master plan open spaces, the scheme includes several incidental spaces at the lake edge to the south and along the east of Bowdry. And these areas provide further play opportunities, bespoke social seating and cycle stands, as well as fruit tree pocket orchards, a dedicated ed edible foraging trail and raised community growing beds. Overall, the site has developed an extensive landscape strategy that is high quality and works well with the layout to create a strong sense of space. Turning to matters of scale and appearance, the applicants have developed a design and character narrative derived from the EDC's Design for Ebsley guide in respect to the Pent, Pinch and Fleet and Hives narratives. With the architecture responding to the white chalk cliffs of the quarry, historic Kentish building forms and waterfront warehousing of Norfleet. The external built form from the Pent character areas relates positively to the adjoining RM1 schemes. The primary street comprises three storey houses with strong gable front repeats and a dark brick plinth to the ground floor. Similarly, the view corridor contains house types comparable to the RM1 approval constructed of contrasting white and dark brick as well as black weatherboarding. The dwellings are generally a three story form offering a scale to enclose the space in care and the carefully considered green corridor it contains. The pinch character narrative relies on more traditional design approach, utilising large and detached dwellings featuring long roofs and gable fronted units which are intended to reference Kentish village housing in a contemporary style. Buildings are proposed in a formal orientation along the secondary street and east west muses and more casually along the eastern boundary responding to the landscaped edge and the adjoining open space. The proposed development includes five three to four storey apartment buildings predominantly located in the south of the parcel with one positioned in the northeast corner of the site. The three blocks with flat roofs will also feature green roofs as well as solar photovoltaic panel systems. Flat block end to the northeast corner incorporates an asymmetrical roof raising to four storeys onto the corner to deliver a prominent landmark feature in accordance with the gateway requirements of the area master plan for this location. Flat block J and K are both comprised a three uh, composed of three large pitched roof in forms inspired by river wolf roof forms. Flat block J fronts the major urban park with balconies maximizing views from the apartment blocks over the parkland. Flat block K forms part of the view corridor, but both buildings utilise a similar simple palette of materials which respond well to the pent narrative, utilising dark brick ground floor plinths, upper floors in white grey brick and selective use of vertical dark weatherboarding differentiating the two blocks from each other. Detailing includes projecting brick courses at ground floor level, selected locations of Flemish bond brick detailing and horizontal weatherboarding between windows on upper floors. Flat box L and M have been designed as a pair of buildings forming a land gate to the southern termination of the view corridor. Together they frame views of the cliffs and provide enclosure to the open space proposed between the buildings. 
The massing and materiality of these buildings is tended to appear as large chalk blocks with simple white brickwork features, recessed double soldier course bounding between floors and dark grey projecting surrounds articulate windows positioned to look out towards the lake and cliffs. Across the apartment blocks, a range of balconies which comply with the EDC balcony design guide in terms of appearance and size are proposed. Balustrades have been redesigned to, to provide more variety, uh, varying in colour of aluminium panning, and some laser cut balustrating is intended for blocks L and M and has been secured by condition. The, appl the applicants have selected a simple palette of materials reflecting the local character and support the creation of a distinct and attractive development. Materials are well used to create rich visual detailing on all buildings and final materials and detailed drawings of all architectural features are to be secured by condition to ensure the high quality design and finish. In accordance with the afford the, the section 106, sorry, in accordance with the flexibility built into the section 106, a strategic approach for the provision of affordable housing to be delivered across the combined Red Road parcels in Alpha and South has been agreed in principle with EDC officers. Consequently, the proposed development seeks to deliver four four-bed affordable homes, all for affordable rent. Together with the affordable housing previously secured on Red Rose first phase, the running total continues to exceed the 25% required by the Section 106, and Dartford Borough Council has confirmed they are satisfied with the proposals, noting it would directly address local need and help tackle current shortages for socially rented larger family homes. Overall, the proposals are considered to be a high quality scheme, which accords well with the area master plan and design code and is policy compliant. The scheme scores highly on the building for life assessment, achieving 11 greens and one amber. The scheme is 100% compliant with the nationally described space standards, provides a range of unit sizes to meet the needs of a variety of occupiers, and will be 65% of units will meet M4 part two of the building regulations, which is in excess of 25% required by the outline permission. The development will also permanently reduce regulated emissions over the baseline under Building Regulations Part L 2021, incorporating air source heat pumps to all houses and cell photovoltaic panels to all apartment blocks. In conclusion, this is a positive scheme which will deliver high quality homes contributing to the ongoing development of Whitecliff and Ebbsfleet. It is therefore recommended for a preview subject to the conditions detailed in the committee report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bang on 10 minutes. Very impressive. Um, right, those uh, supporting the scheme. Yeah, thank you. I'm just going to speak for a couple of minutes, so it'll be well um, in mind. If you just introduce yourself, I know that we met before, but. Yep, yeah, now, of course. Hello, hi, good afternoon, members, officers. My name's Roland Brass. I'm from uh, Knight Frank. And, um, you know, I'd say we're working on behalf of Red Road and the. Um, in sites in Ebb Street Green. Firstly, I just want to say thank you, Shay, for the excellent presentation. Um, I'm not really going to go into the technical points. I'm just going to talk about the overall kind of vision and, uh, and what we're trying to do on the site. So I'm just going to speak for a couple of minutes. But I think ultimately the key point here is that the proposals for RMA to represent the second of four phases, um, Algod and South being brought forward by Red Row Homes. Um, RMA 1, as you've heard, was consented earlier this year and it joins this site to the west. Um, this, the site holds a prime location in the Garden City, overlooking the, major, overlooking the major urban park to the west, the lakes to the south, Castle Hill Swale to the east, and is located a short walking distance to, to Alcorton neighbourhood centre. So it really is a kind of prime, prime location. Um, RMA 2 represents a natural extension of RMA 1, and, it can, um, and in doing so, it completes the, the north-south view corridor, which we have designed as a landscaped home zone area. It brings forward the flagship chalk cliff inspired apartments, which overlook the lakes to the south, and provides a new mix of homes which overlook the, the surrounding parkland. With our focus on delivery and delivering high quality residential development, the RMA show homes officially opened a couple of weeks ago, and Red Row have now officially named the, the site Stonehaven Park. I just really wanted to kind of more or less set out the response to the show homes, which, which like I said, opened a couple of weeks ago. It was a really fantastic response. I think it's, it's fair to say we were, I guess, absolutely delighted with the response. Um, a whole range of stakeholders were there, including the Mayor of Dartford, um, with Councillor Rosanna Cowans and several other stakeholders. 
Um, just got a couple of photos here of the actual kind of buildings which are on site, which are show homes, which I'm happy to, to pass around if you wish. But it was it was just really great to kind of have them open now. I'll pass them around for you so you can really kind of see the quality of the brick work and what, what we're trying to do here. Um, I just wanted to point out some of the comments we've received, in particular from Simon Harrison, who, who posted online that. Uh, I'm told that apparently we're not meant to look at extra documents. Oh, so apologies, OK. So we are the effervescence on the brickwork. OK, the yeah. <laughs> okay. Apologies. apologies for that. I wasn't aware of that. We're just kind of keen to show the yes. quality here. Um, so let me carry on. I just really wanted to point out some of the comments that we had from, from EDC, in particular Simon, who was very complimentary of the townhouses, um, really complimentary of the approaches, the porches, beautiful brickwork, um, at, more or less more or less come together and, and, and reflect what's, what's there in the surrounding chalk cliffs. Um, also comments that the construction quality is first, first class with exceptional brickwork throughout. Um, and, and ultimately, it's really great to get this type of feedback, particularly when, when you go from the planning stage to, to seeing these, these schemes being built out. So I think more than anything, we just want to emphasise the same design quality is going to, is going to come through into this site um, at RMA2. And, and just going back to the, the RMA2 scheme to wrap up, um, which is being considered tonight, I won't go into the technical detail, but as Shay has set out, the scheme is fully compliant with the design code is fully compliant with the area master plan as well as all of the other requirements of the outline planning permission and EDC's um, additional guidance. Um, so yeah, we're ultimately here to, to deliver a sustainable, high quality, well landscape new community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, committee members, any questions? <coughs> So the question I'm asking again, um, on 6.119, you said that some of the um, houses will have a space on the um, road, well, that's perpendicular parking. Would they um, have permits? Would they, or would that be regulated by parking permits? That's, um, I was going to say, we're actually all registered to speak. So I promise that, I promise that to Brendan, yeah. or highways. <clears throat> all numbered spaces will be controlled and owned by those properties themselves. Right. Whether in courtyards, they will be associated again with individual dwellings. So it's not a permit system, it's a it's your space okay. system. Okay, and that'd be the same for those that are parking on the road. Yes, and any designated spaces that applies to any spaces which are visitor spaces will be highway spaces which there is no regulation of under our control, but any spaces which are allocated are specifically theirs. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No? All right, well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. So I'll ask you to leave the table. Yes, no worries. Thank you. Right, I'll hand it over to uh, members for debate. Anybody like to make any particular contribution? Uh, well. So I, I, I had to thank you for me, Neil. Um, just to say that I was particularly struck by the the apartment block designs. I think the southern tip ones in particular caught my eye, and I thought, were well, it much will depend on the quality of the materials and the workmanship. So perhaps you need to get the same brickies as we were just singing the praises of. Um, proof of the pudding will be in there, and how they the, the materials and the, how they're built. But I think they are looking very striking. And I bet you almost to go as far as to say, I think we're seeing the emergence of an absolute vernacular rather than a standard design shoehorned into vaguely a dress with Pinshaw or another sort of topic out of our own design brief. So, um, yeah, full marks for that. But uh, otherwise, generally content. Thank you. Good. Anybody else? Yes, Alan. Thanks. I, I think um, this is you know, greatly improved from uh, when we saw it previously. I mean, there's a lot of sustainable credentials now, aren't they, with the electric charging and the source heat pumps you were just talking about and the green roofs and so on. I do agree with your comments about 
flats to the south, and especially if they are to be a land gate. I mean, certainly in the presentation pack, they do appear quite bland. So I do think we need to we would encourage you to have um, you know, a real close eye on the detailing. But, but overall, um, I think this is a real improvement. I mean, the parking is definitely much better planned and concealed. There's more variation on the balconies. I think some colleagues have already mentioned that. More incidental open spaces. There's really great aspects overlooking the lake for many of the properties. There's greater access um, to the open spaces. Uh, there's large gardens for the houses. In fact, you know, unusually so, I would suggest. Um, the houses, I'm told, exceed the space standards, and there's actually more social housing as well. So, I mean, overall, uh, I think this is you know, a really good solution and great progress from where we were previously. Lauren. Lovely, thank you. Um, just wanted to build on the the flats and the the quality and the um i don't know if it, it it is going to be definitely brick and not render we know that render doesn't do very well with with time um and do we know the kind of the service charge for these flats because i know that that is a huge problem elsewhere on um elsewhere uh, in the absolute city so i just wondered if what sort of service charge provision is, will be an addition because of the flats? But will they have lift maintenance and all that sort of stuff and ensuring that it still stays as it is? I mean, I'm not a fan of the of the flat roofs. Um, I prefer the, the housing thing, but um, as long as it is of high quality, that it won't you know deteriorate over time. I'm looking at 20 years ahead. Um, can I turn to officers on the materials from mm. I think the service charges are probably beyond our remit as a planning decision maker. Sure, the, the, the materials are obviously um, shown as being high quality, the simple palette of materials that are there. Um, conditions are included to ensure that we have samples that we can approve to make sure that they are meeting those kind of precedent images. The, the CGIs are all very nice, but we want to make sure that the uh, the, the, the end materials and, and the, fi the finish of those are, are, are meet up. So there will be a check before it, it goes out uh, on those. Um, and also with the architectural detailing that's picked up by Val Valerie Owen, um, that, that we will have the full uh, detailed drawings um, to, to review to make sure that the uh, the architectural features are are, are do, going to have the impact that they are indicated on the on the on the um, the application as it stands. So we, we have a, a further level of refinement there. Um, in terms of the service charge, no, it, it is beyond me. But we did have a note about the um, the roof. I'm sorry, the the lifts and um, discussions with Redway uh, were that they used a particular uh, lift um, manufacturer in servicing because they kept their servicing charges low for them. So they have that in mind for their residents. Um, but maybe, yeah, that, that's all I can say on that point. And that I think on the materials, can you just confirm this? I've got the CGI here, and if I expand it a bit, I can see that on those flats, what's intended are bricks. Um, yes. Is that right? Yes, there's no render. Yeah, if I, if I could just confirm, um, I think the, the, the team have been giving an awful lot of consideration to maintaining design quality um, across the board, and, and I think that having these conversations is really helpful because it means that we can really focus in on what those key buildings are, uh, we obviously only have a certain limited amount of resource internally, but then particularly when those buildings go, we can make sure that we have some some uh, some, some site visits at, at, at the appropriate time to sort of make sure that those are being sort of delivered as per um, as per expectations. We promised brick at six five eight. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I think for me, um, those two blocks of flats are quite striking. And they'll only work if there is high quality, if there are high quality materials. Okay. Any other? Yes, Lauren. Thank you. Um, can I just seek some uh, assurance on the parking front and just ask for how many visitor parking spaces there is likely to be and what the ratio is for 
the um, houses and the apartments, please. I cannot see that. Right, no, I've seen it and I've been scrolling up and down and I've... At least, I believe it's 17. Um, Page 53. Yeah, let me just go down. Parking. So it's, there's 16 spaces for visitors planned into the scheme and one that has been relocated from the first phase. Um, in terms of that, that there is an under... Well, the, the sustainable travel strategy would have preferred to have a higher level of, of visitor parking in the public realm. However, mm. the parking management plan for Alcadon uh, kind of stipulates that it will be minimised. So we have a bit of a, a of two documents that are are that they align largely, but there are certain elements where they 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 they, 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 they conflict slightly on on those points. And in terms of the overall provision, they 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 are meeting those requirements in terms of having two kind of spaces for the majority of homes um, mm -hmm. in, a, in a tandem arrangement. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's what we have in the scheme. It's it's been limited deliberately in, for, for for visitor parking within the public realm. Right. And if I were to be a visitor, a hypothetical thing, if I were to be a visitor and wanted to access some of the um, the lakes around there and have a have a walk, would I need to know somebody in order to have a visitor permit or parking scheme? It would just it would be OK to park there. Um, I Rebecca, well, I think that when it comes down to the the, the open spaces, visitor parking. Yeah with the within the Arcadon Market Centre, which adjoins to, to 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 the major urban park, so that's where people would be, obviously, kind of signposted to, um, rather than it being in these residential areas. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of parking management, I know it's quite a, a hot topic locally. Um, mm -hmm. there, there is the parking management plan for Arcadon sets out that um, that. Sorry, let me just get my notes. <laughs> It acknowledges that parking should be properly provided and managed to ensure cars do not park indiscriminately, such as on verges. But it also notes that a blanket approach is not is to be avoided. So we really need to have um, parking that, that is fit for purpose and depending on the circumstances of the site. And they could either be considered at the RM stage uh, should charging be deemed necessary, for example, in the market centre where you have demand, or where parking problems arise following occupation, it's the management company uh, would be responsible for developing an appropriate response. So it, it does that there's flex in the planning to say that that management would be could come in if it was appropriate to do so. But in the end, it's reliant on on highways adoption eventually, and and, and the majority of the roads are are, are proposed for it, uh, indicated to be adopted in the scheme. Brilliant. They will all be hopefully adopted. So that's good. Thank you. Any other comments before we move to a decision? Anything else you wish to add? Oh, no, thank you. Right, fine. Let's move to a, a decision. The recommendation is to approve subject to conditions uh, with delegated authority to the Chief Planning Officer to make minor changes to the wording. So those in favour? Six. All of us. Right. Well, thank you very much. That uh, completes that item. And we've got further. So thank you for your participation. Um, planning activity report now, which is item seven. We've got two planning activity reports and they're both for noting. Yes, they are. And if, just, if I could just say a few words. Um, yes, it is. Uh, one report covering the uh, quarter course in the last quarter of the last year. Um, and then uh, one to the first quarter. Um, essentially, the thresholds um, and actually the performance um, is, 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 is the same through, through both areas. Um, so, yes, yeah, performance last year uh, was, uh, was, was, was uh, very good, excellent. I can't, I can't fault it, obviously. Um, and um, yeah, a very, very strong start to this year as well. So, so thank, you for, thank you to the team um, for that. Um, just a bit, of, a bit of context, I know that both reports do have um, some information about planning income. Uh, there has been some movement from the government um, around some consultations um, recently about increasing uh, planning fees. So depending upon when that kicks in, that may obviously have a, 
a beneficial impact and see in terms of the resource um, available to the team. So, yeah, these are for notes. Thank you. Well, I would like to express my thanks to officers for the performance that they've achieved, because not many local authorities do similar performance. So well done. Thank you. I look to those who are here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other comments on this? Any other? Right. Well, we'll note those reports and go on to item eight, which is the delegated item report. Mark. Yes, thank you. Um, again, just for noting, um, but just to clarify, because actually there's a few items on here that actually went to the planning committee, so I don't want the um, committee to think that we are determining some applications um, under delegated powers that you would normally see. So there are 49 cases listed, so this comes a period uh, yeah, um, from the beginning of March to the end of June, but there are a handful of cases on here that the committee did, did actually see in relation to <coughs> the market centre, Alcadon and the SV Green Community Buildings. But um, as ever, happy to take questions or um, if there are questions um, afterwards, we, um, obviously feel free to email me or Michael. Can, can I just ask one question, which is on land north of London Road, yes. uh, Croxton and Gary. Yeah. And that has got um, changes to the approved housing 10 year strategy plan to facilitate delivery of revised affordable housing scheme and modification to provision of wheelchair adaptable user condition. Um, what was the change to the affordable housing scheme? Uh, Michael. Um, okay. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> 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 The, ch oh, the chain, the oh gosh, now I'm trying to. Well, if you haven't got the details, you could give follow up. But yeah, I, they, they changed the buildings um, around that were going to be affordable um, with the market ones. Um, so there was no change in in the level. Of that's that. all. That's what I was interested in. Was there a change in the no. amount of affordable housing or the tenure? No, no, and, and no change in the wheelchair provision right. of wheelchair user units. It was it was changes in the buildings. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other queries on the delegated items? No? Well, that's that item. Thank you very much. And I think that completes the agenda. It does. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much indeed, everybody. And um, we're meeting again in September. I think. Uh, we have an informal session in August. September. September. Yeah. And then after that is September.